Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for my preview team selector ahead of the game tomorrow at the Emirates against Arsenal. It's always a big game against Arsenal, especially at the Emirates. Um, I know that there's a lot of feeling going into this game, uh, especially from the Arsenal side, that they, they're obviously in, in a bad way, you know, losing the first game of the season against Brentford. Um, but I'm very, very cautious going into this game because that has kind of been the narrative going into recent games against Arsenal, the back end of last season at Stamford Bridge, um, going into the game at the Emirates under Lampard last season around Christmas time and even before then. You know, Chelsea have a pretty abysmal record against Arsenal. It's kind of becoming a curse that Chelsea need to end tomorrow at the Emirates. And I think some of it has to do at times with complacency within the first team squad. Maybe the sense that we're so much the favourites going into this game, you know, being the dominant side that we, we falter. And that needs to change tomorrow. You know, I think that hopefully Arsenal will be a little bit more uh, expressive or at least take more risks, I think, in front of their own fans who will maybe demand a bigger performance. Um, you know, if you think back to the game in May, they were much more defensive at the bridge. Maybe being at home in front of fans will change some of that and allow more space for our attackers. The narrative, obviously, Lukaku, his return to the Chelsea first team, going to see him hopefully starting the game. So we'll get into some of that. The tactics, looking at Arsenal, how I think Tuchel should approach this game, my predicted lineup and all of that good stuff. Hit that subscribe button, notification bell, so you don't miss any of the uploads on the channel. Also hit that like button because it helps new people find it as well. So just team news quickly, of course, uh, Thomas Tuchel confirming that Christian Pulisic is a self-isolating, uh, tested positive for COVID-19. He appears to be okay. You know, apparently he's double jab, so he hasn't felt any symptoms, but he has to, of course, self-isolate. Really frustrating for uh, for Christian Pulisic once again. He scores a goal against Crystal Palace. All right, it wasn't an amazing performance, but, you know, you feel like for Pulisic, for Ziyech, who's suffered some bad luck in recent weeks, these are the type of players, and I think hudson Doy falls into the same category, who need to find a bit of good luck this season and take their opportunities. Um, so, obviously, it's going to take Pulisic out of this game likely out of next week as well against Liverpool so that will take us up to the international break so really frustrating for Pulisic and kind of maybe makes that front free conundrum a little bit easier for Tuchel tomorrow at least when we're predicting the team um, but the good news is N'Golo Kante and Hakim Ziyech back in the squad or at least back in training and Tuchel sounded very optimistic in his in his press conference yesterday about their availability less surprised about Kante I think we all felt quite optimistic that he'd be back and that was very early on this week more to do with Hakim Ziyech who I did mention in my Let's Talk Chelsea I believe on Thursday just great to see him back in training I didn't expect it to be this quick and the fact that he could be available at least off the bench is really really good for Ziyech but let's look at the game and sort of approaching it. Great start to the season against Crystal Palace, of course, off the back of winning the Super Cup. Of course, they did the double over us last year, losing the FA Cup final to them in 2020. The previous season, the 2-2 draw at Stamford Bridge. Um, so it's, it's not been a good time against Arsenal. And despite their problems going into these games recently, it doesn't seem to impact them. You expect Arsenal to raise their game, especially after last week where they were really, really poor against Brentford. Um, and Chelsea need to put this right and maybe once again it's that kind of mentality thing of this squad of when we're the underdogs when we have more space and we're coming up against a team who are level or a little bit better than us we seem to perform better but when we're coming up against a side we're expected to not batter but you know be a lot more dominant and a lot more assured against that's when we fall up so that's going to be a big challenge tomorrow at the Emirates can Chelsea play on some of Arsenal's nerves and really take it to them and put in a really assured display that's what we hope and get the three points looking at Arsenal obviously we've only started the season so in terms of their last five I took it back to the end of last season which they really ended the season quite well of course beating Chelsea I think they, they won their last five games which actually got them quite close to Chelsea in the end in the Premier League which felt Felt pretty ridiculous because they were never really close to the Champions League places but by the final uh, day of the season. I think they're about six points from us, which is quite crazy. Um, obviously, their, their top goal scorer last season was Alexandre Lacazette, who I don't think will be available for this game. Still out with COVID, I believe, um, so won't be available. Um, he's a big miss for them. And uh, yeah, the pressure's kind of on Arteta. You know, the questions are being asked about his ability as a coach currently, which I think are absolutely fair. I'm still not quite sure what it's Arsenal side under him are trying to be. Um, at times, you can see the Pep Guardiola influence in the way they play out, but I don't think that's 
as revolutionary because a lot of teams in the Premier League like to, to play out from the back now. It's, it's not that sort of surprising anymore. Arteta, I think I think there's a lot of excuses made for him. I know he's he's got difficult ownership. I know the culture and sort of the, the mood around Arsenal hasn't been good for a number of years. Um, but I just feel that Arteta maybe gets away with things that I know other coaches haven't in the past. And I just feel his teams are lacking sort of an identity. They're lacking a vision. Um, I think many times they're, they're tactically outclassed and they just seem to to lack any sort of energy at times and and obviously I'm saying this before we play them and I, I fully expect Arsenal to turn up tomorrow but that is something that I think is very relevant and hopefully Chelsea can play on tomorrow and expose some tactical flaws that I think Chelsea can go at if, if they're left there for Chelsea to expose. Looking at their last game they played with a 4-2-3-1 um, I expect this once again uh, Arteta maybe to be a little bit more defensively sound could switch to a back three try and match Chelsea up um, it's just in terms of personnel at the moment who would play the wing back role you know it's easy to say to maybe help out Ben White let's throw another centre back in there but that doesn't mean that Chelsea still can't sort of pry on the errors and and find those gaps even if they do shape up in a similar way to Chelsea um, but I expect that 4-2-3-1 I think the three key areas for me Chelsea should be looking to exploit is the space behind Kieran Tierney who's probably one of Arsenal's biggest threats offensively he kind of has to be he kind of has to begin a lot of their attacks because they struggle to create chances in open play they have a real struggle in terms of any sort of plan of how they move the ball forward really slow really tedious but Kieran Tini gets it going a lot of the time but the problem is especially when he's just playing as a left back in a foreign defense he leaves a lot of space to be exposed behind him um, and that's where Chelsea I think on that right hand side could really benefit if Tini's bombing forward which he's very natural to do that's kind of a big part of his game he needs to create and orchestrate some of Arsenal's best play to create sort of uh, crossing opportunities on that left which is going to give Chelsea a problem as it did last year at the Emirates but at the same time if Chelsea can defend those um, those moves well and then find the space as Tierney struggles to get back especially watching that Brentford game there were several times when Tierney was sort of up the field stranded Pablo Mari on the left of the back four moved forward and there was tons of space for Brentford to to run into and you think on that right hand side if Kai Havertz is playing there loves to play in that position deceptively quick uh, of course Romelu Lukaku loves running into that space to Mason Mount whoever is on that side I think can really benefit from that and if we can get some good passes from our right centre back potentially through to whoever that player is in the front three it could be a, a good day for Chelsea that's that's the first part I do think there is space to exploit behind Kieran Tini and trying to isolate that back two of Arsenal even a back three as we saw in the preseason friendly last month I think there's a lot of joy to be had there physical battle obviously you've now got Lukaku which is going to give Chelsea so much more variety in the way we can attack teams you can absolutely play the ball more direct to Lukaku and know that he can give defenders a physical challenge occupying multiple defenders in particular Ben White really struggled against the the physical battle of uh, Ivan Tony. Um, we really struggled against him. I think the way Brentford was so direct, they clearly knew that was a weakness in, in Ben White's game. And especially Pablo Mari too. Very, there's not many imposing defenders in Arsenal's back line. And at, once again, you think the perfect guy to do that is Lukaku. So that's another way, being a little bit more direct, trying to get the ball up to Lukaku, win the physical battle early and hopefully um, get some joy from that. And pressing Arsenal from their own goal kicks. I mean, Arsenal try and play out from the back, but I mean, there's been many times where they look really shaky doing it. Leno's not the best with the ball at his feet. I think that's why they've invested on Aaron Ramsdale trying to strengthen that area if Leno plays I think that's an area Chelsea can also exploit with the counter press trying to go up up really high against Arsenal at times and, and see if they make a mistake you know Hector Bellerin played in Tammy Abraham by accident in the preseason friendly and that's an example many times in that second half you saw that and that's a consistent pattern and even though you know, once again, it goes back to Arteta. You know, even though Arsenal have continuously under actually a number of coaches struggle to play out from the back since Wenger's left, they still persist with it. Um, so it's an area of weakness I also think Chelsea could look to exploit. Um, I also do think that uh, Bukayo Saka and Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, both available, should come into the starting eleven here. Um, it's just a case of where they play. I think Saka obviously on the left, Tierney Saka that can be a very devastating uh, to their two of Arsenal's best players. And I think Emil Smith Rowe is it. They're the three best performing players at the moment. Aubameyang had a difficult last season. Uh, always a very good goal scorer as, as scored against Chelsea a number of times but let's go into Chelsea and I think the way Tuchel is going to approach this game um, rotation and kind of how much do you want to change a winning team and also I think the big question mark and the kind of difficult thing for me going into this game of predicting my team is the late returning players how many of them are going to feature mainly now I'm looking at Reese James, Ben Chirwell and Thiago Silva Tuchel doesn't really have a easy midweek game, say a League Cup game. 
to really slowly bed these players in. I know they had the Weymouth friendly, but you know, that was more of a fitness exercise. How ready are these players to step in? You know, Marcus Alonso has been filling in at left wing back, but Ben Chirwell for me is the better one defensively. And I think he will be asked a lot more questions in this game than he was against Crystal Palace, especially with Nicola Pepe on that right-hand side um, and the way he'll he'll try and expose uh, Chelsea in defence at one-on-one. -on -one. So I prefer Ben Chirwell there, but is Ben Chirwell ready to play a full 90 minutes of, of intense Premier League football? And a week from now, we're at Anfield. So it, maybe this is the game to bring those players back, but there were players who performed really well against Crystal Palace who probably feel should be in the first team. So that's a difficult thing. As you can see from my first predicted lineup, which is the one I've kind of mainly gone for here, um, not too radically different, but of course, bringing some players back in. I think uh, Trevor Chalabar deserves to keep his place. He's had an amazing start to the season. He really has. I want to see him play in quite an intense atmosphere, how he deals against Arsenal on the right of that back three, which does mean Dave is once again playing at right wing back, which isn't his favourite position. I think he performs much better in the right centre back role. But the way Chalobah was threading some passes through to Timo Werner last week, I think is really encouraging. And in this game, as I say, where Chelsea are going to look to exploit Arsenal between midfield and especially defence and trying to, as I say, get, get space behind Kiarantini. I think potentially on that right-hand side, Chalaba could have some joy trying to uh, thread passes through to Chelsea's attackers. So that's why I've gone with Chalaba. I think he deserves it. Christensen too and Rudiger. So the same back three that started last week. I've made one change to the back five, which is bringing back Ben Chua. But as I say, question mark over his fitness. If Kante's fit, he plays alongside Jorginho, who had a really good start to the season last week, very much getting back to his tempo setting best. And once again, you know, Jorginho made a mistake against Arsenal back in May. We'll want to rectify that here. He's He's been in amazing form. And I think those two have really found a, a great balance in central midfield that you can really trust them as the first choice pairing. Then we get into the front three. I think the front three is actually the biggest debate point going into this game. My main one is Kai Havertz, Mason Mountain and, and Lukaku. Um, I don't think Timo Werner has massively impressed me so far this, this season. And as well, Kai Havertz, I think is just flowing with so much confidence now. The, the space is going to pick up. I think him and Lukaku, I'm really excited to see how those two could work off each other. I know there's some concern about them maybe occupying similar spaces, but I'm not quite sure. I think that both of these players are really intelligent at finding space. And especially if Mason Mount naturally drops a little bit deeper, it could become kind of a, a split striker system. I think you'll see that a lot this year. I think Mason will become a third midfielder as he kind of always, always does. He kind of is that link player in the front three to the central midfield area. He naturally drops deeper and then drives forward with the ball so potentially that will allow both to split so you've got Lukaku maybe on the left Kai on on, on the right but we see Kai playing on the left so far I think there's fluidity there to, to play with and I, I want to see Kai play and I think he obviously didn't start the game or, or last Saturday against Crystal Palace I think he should be fresh so I'd love to see Havertz Lukaku mount I think that's the majority of Chelsea fans kind of front three my second front three is uh, bringing Timo Werner into the side, but dropping Kai Havertz. Um, Mason Mount is an undroppable player. He really is. He's essential to Chelsea and started the season in an influential manner last year, and he's so key for these games. The only reason I'm bringing uh, Werner in is because, you know, he's someone that consistently plays under Thomas Tuchel. And if Arsenal decide to play a high line, if you watch the preseason game against Arsenal, how much you can take into a preseason friendly, I'm not entirely sure. But Arteta decided to play quite a high line in that game and Chelsea exposed it on a number of occasions. And we know the brilliant movement Timo Werner has. And even if he doesn't score, he can sometimes easily set up his teammates um, and trying to break sort of behind our Arsenal's defence, I think could be quite devastating in the game. So I think Werner, I wouldn't be overly stunned if he is starting the game. But as I say, there's, there's so many options for Tuchel to choose uh, from. I think that it, for me, Havertz, Lukaku and, and Mount is going to be my first choice front three. But as I say, I think Werner, is has a quite a good chance to start this game as he starts a lot of big games with Chelsea. So those are my two lineups. Let me know your lineups in the comments below. Let me know your feelings ahead of this game. I think it's just always always would be a massive win at the Emirates. It is. You know, I know obviously at the moment Arsenal are not in the best place, but just putting that curse behind us, making it two wins in a row, looking at the way our, our closest Premier League rivals, I think the title rivals this year, are starting the seasons off well. We want to continue that good form. Hopefully we can get a good win and hopefully hopefully Lukaku can get his first first goal back at Chelsea. So those are my thoughts on the game. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of the uploads. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea and I'll see you again.